Oh my god, the dirt bike fell off. Crap! Ah! Hello. I'm very glad to have you back for another episode. And if I'm at all honest with you, I miss these episodes. If you've been following the channel for a while, you've kind of seen that we had a lot of episodes and a lot of vlogs. And over the course of the whole channel, I've really loved doing rig walkarounds and telling other people's stories of them traveling on the road. And to be honest, I've gotten a little bit obsessed with that. And when I do these rig walkarounds, I just want to put them out there right away because these people's stories have inspired me so much. But I've realized that I haven't been telling my story as much. So we're going back to Utah, episode 16. I'm here in Washington, by the way, right now. And, uh, been all through California and Oregon and Canada already, and we're gonna head to Alaska as well. So there's huge stuff coming. I have so much to update you guys on. It's actually a little bit daunting, um, but there's lots of good stuff that happened, and I filmed it pretty much all. So let's go back to Utah. We're going to Tokerville Falls. Let's head on back to Utah and catch you guys up with my story living full time on the road. All right, what's up everybody? Well, I just Skyped with my brother from the Netherlands at a gas station in Hurricane Utah. So that was pretty cool. Now we are headed to Tokerville Falls. And I've seen this place on Instagram um, a bunch, mainly the one picture of rigs crossing the top of the waterfall. So you can cross at the top. It's It looks to be very, very low. But anyways, really excited. Uh, this is a place, like I said, that I've kind of been scoping for a while and been on the list for a little bit. So excited to take you there. Woo! So yeah, it's a pretty like popular area, but I, I, I mean, I don't know. There could be tons of people out there. There could be nobody. I've seen it. The pictures I've seen haven't been a lot of people, but that's just pictures. But either way, I'm stoked. I really don't care. If there's a lot of people, awesome. Hopefully we'll meet people. My mentality has changed a lot traveling solo on the road. Meeting people is great, so I don't really mind camping next to other people. Whereas before, I would solely go camping to get away from people. And so. This is what they say when they mean rough road. Like super jagged, like, you know, it's not like gnarly crawling, but it's super rough road. So yeah, we're gonna air down. How you doing? Did an area so far, but still really easy. We just, honestly, just kinda got it go slow. That's the main challenging thing about wheeling this truck is just taking everything uber de -de -de slow. Because, yeah, it'll slam you real hard if you want it to. The dirt bike fell off. Oh my god, that weld broke. No way, no way, this weld broke. I knew that. I knew that was gonna happen. This poor KTM. Oh no, what do I do now? I'm gonna have to camp like right here and stay with the bike and get someone to rescue it. Ah, oh, 
This is bad. I knew this was gonna happen. I had a feeling. Crap! Ah! At this point, I was most concerned with getting the bike out of the road and collecting all the pieces because it was kind of a high traffic day. But the good news was, it was kind of a high traffic day. So before I had time to collect my thoughts, Mark yeah. came along. On the worst two inch, two inch extension ever. I should have known. I should have known. What a beautiful view. Dang, I really wanted to get to Tokerville Falls, man. Today. We'll get there eventually, but. Uh, really, I just need someone with a welder on board. Full 3G service, so that's good. I got the Garmin if I needed to satellite text, but this sucks, man. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I need a welder to come out here. Mark is my savior today. He's taking the KTM out for me, and I'm gonna follow him out. You know what kind of bumps me out, too? I was literally filming two seconds before that, and then the bike fell off. I almost got it on film. Like, it wouldn't have been cool. It would have just been bike falling off, but it would have been funny, fun for you guys to see, for sure. So, it hurts when something like this happens. Pile it on. I just posted a video called the best moto rack ever. Like, it makes me feel like an extra idiot now that I just posted that. I still believe this is the best moto rack ever. Uh, you just have to get a good two inch receiver and rise that, you know, works well. KTM looks good in the back of a pickup truck. Maybe we'll just sell it and it'll go off in the back of a pickup truck to somebody. They won't have to deal with it. No, that's not the right attitude, Phil. But honestly, this dirt bike thing has been something I've the whole time been like, really? I'm, I mean, I love dirt, don't get me wrong, I love dirt biking, but like, really, you're gonna haul that with you everywhere? Like, and it's kind of been a pain in the ass. Like, I can feel the difference when it's not back there. Nice little toy home for sale, doesn't say how much. Well, we're back in Hurricane at the laundromat. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I think we might be going to the Walmart unless his brother's welding shop's around here. Yep, turning into the Walmart, back at the Walmart. Wah, 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 wah. Right, well we're here at Walmart. Coda Girl's being patient. Stay there, babies. We got the vent going for her. It's nice and cool in there. But anyways, this is what broke. So check this out. This wasn't welded on the inside. Got rusted on the inside there. I bought this a few months ago. Um, and the welds just all snapped off right there. Piece of crap. But yeah, you can see like right here, just like wasn't, it's like flat right there. <laughs> like wasn't stuck at all. And it got rusted in there and just popped up. That might be one of the issues right there. Should have looked at that and, <laughs> and uh, returned it. But anyways, lesson learned. Well, I realized something pretty funny uh, yesterday. That, you know, when I just sat down in the camper and I was talking to Fife and I had a moment to kind of think about what had happened, I realized I wasn't stuck at all. All I had to do was take this piece off, the rise, and that broke off broke right there and put the moto hauler on the extension right there take the hitch link out and put it right there uh, I didn't realize I, I forgot like you have two receivers this was a rise so you, you have two you have one down below so anyways um, I'm just gonna throw it on there so I'm gonna go back home and I'm gonna redo my electrical I'm gonna install a one burner slide out little stove thingy. And I'm gonna leave a few other things behind and I'll let you know what I'm leaving behind. Things that I just thought I needed that I know after two weeks on the road that I don't. The thought of heading home gave me very mixed emotions. On the one hand, like I said, it'd be great to shed some unneeded weight and get rid of some things I realized I don't need. But on the other hand, it was a bit nerve wracking because I would have to leave again and I might fall into the comforts of regular old life. 
But first things first, we got to get this dirt bike mounted up again. And of course, the hitch pin holes didn't quite line up and needed to be drilled out. Just another thing. Luckily, I had all the tools with me to get the job done. These just terrible welds. Well, I know the perfect place for this. Metal. Well, it's a little bit easier. It's still tricky, but not nearly as bad. I don't want to do a video about something until I've had experience with it. I put about 3,000 miles on this moto rack and bounced it around quite a bit and people were asking, I was getting a lot of questions and people were interested in how it was set up. So I really wanted to get a video out for you guys to see how this thing was set up. Um, but I, I wish I would have waited a week because then I could have told you some other things. So this is a good update. I'm glad to share either way. But hey, if you want to carry all the crap I'm carrying and go to all the places I'm going and wheel the crap out of the rig, and do it now without you know having to learn everything perfectly before you make any mistakes. Yeah, you're gonna have mistakes. You're gonna have lots of stuff like this. Um, and that's half the fun to me is, is tweaking it and being like, okay, maybe the dirt bike isn't right for this setup. And as bummed as that makes me because I love riding dirt bikes, it makes me happy I've, I've learned. You know, I've learned something that traveling with a dirt bike alone I mean, it never sounded like a good idea. It sounded like fun, but it honestly hasn't been as much fun as I thought. It's more of a headache. Okay, I think I need to take my roto packs off for now. Yep. After getting the dirt bike all mounted up again and getting loaded up on beer from Walmart, we headed back into the desert to find another piece of land to call our home. Luckily, we found one with a little bit of water flowing through that I could actually take a little, well, I guess you call it bath, shower, I don't know, and uh, edit some video, take some time to just relax. Until it's laundry day, I mean cleanup day, shower day, whatever you want to call it. Take our little path down here to the little... Running water creek de la Bob. Oh, jeez. Oops. Let's go. Oh. oh my gosh, Koda. Jeez. That was crazy. You okay? That was nuts. <laughs> this is like a big rock slab right here. It's so cool. As it was nice to catch up on some video, I kind of pondered and just at that moment I got a call from one of my best jeeping buddies, Andy from Arizona, and he said he was coming out to Sand Hollow, Utah in the next weekend. And well, I just happened to be right around the corner about a half hour away. So, so I decided to stay a couple extra days to meet up with this crazy group for one of the gnarliest jeeping experiences I've ever had. Stay tuned for that in episode 17. Thanks so much for watching this one. And as always, the question is, are you down to mom?